Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Now, I've been saving up matches for quite a while. And I like to get the match boxes because you can scrape off the sides and make Armstrong's mixture, which I show in a separate video. This is basically a contact explosive. Um, but you need a whole uh, side of a match box and only one or two match heads to make the mixture. Uh, so you're left with all these matches. So I've been saving them up and matches are composed of mainly potassium uh, chlorate. And potassium chlorate is a very strong oxidizer. And when mixed with aluminum powder, it is known as flash powder and used in pyrotechnics such as fireworks and stuff. And um, it has a variety of uses. So today we're going to be making some. Um, well, not making it, just extracting it from these match heads. So this is a very lengthy process, but mainly just the beginning because what we need to do is take our matches and take some pliers such as these and crush the head of the match and get all the pink powder in there. Now it doesn't matter what type of matches you use as long as they're not the Strike Anywhere matches. Strike Anywhere matches have a little white tip at the end um, and those will not work for this um, uh, procedure because they contain other chemicals which are most likely water soluble and will be contaminants. And because they're Strike Anywhere match they can ignite themselves and Later on when we try to do this, um, with a, quote, pure potassium perchlorate, or potassium chlorate, if it isn't pure with that other impurity, it can be ex very dangerous and even explosive. So we always want to make sure to use these to have as little contamination as possible. So anyway, I'm going to uh, crush all of the match heads into this little ditch here, and I'll be back as soon as that is done. Okay, so after grinding for like something like 20 hours non-stop and just removing all those match heads by hand, I realized it was a really dumb process and it's never going to be like worth my time to extract the teeny amount of potassium chloride in there. So I found a much easier method, which um, is slightly more dangerous, but works a lot better. So all you're going to need is a blender of some sort that you've dedicated strictly for science. So do not use a food blender. So just have this magic bullet. Next, you will take your matches, insert them in here, and blend them up until all the powder on the match heads is flaked off. You can then use something like a strainer to shake out all of the match powder and some of the wood chips, and then discard the um, chopped up matches into a bag. So, some of these are the ones that I hand grinded, but you can see where I've chopped it up. And if you give the bag a shake, you can actually get some powder to fall down in the corners, so we'll be able to collect that later. And as for this over here, don't worry about any of the wood chips that come over that are too small to fill, um, that because they go through the strainer, don't worry about them. Because when we go to dissolve this, um, all the potassium chlorate will dissolve, and the wood chips, because they're um, lighter than water, they'll all float to the surface and we can skim them off. So I'm thinking that this is going to be a much easier way to get all of our potassium chlorate. So I'm going to go ahead, finish grinding up all these matches, and meet you back. Okay, so when all the matches have been grinded up, you can see we're left with a fair amount of powder, but it's all um, contaminated. So we'll be dealing with this in a moment. Now, in the bag with all your um, unused matches and grinded up and whatnot, if you give it a good shake, all the uh, powder that um, was stuck in here will fall to the edge. So we can then remove all these upper matches and, be, and then filter off this uh, remaining powder. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then I'll meet you back for the next step. Okay, so I measured it in on my scale, and we have 34 grams of this powder. Now, 50 grams will dissolve in 100 milliliters of water at 100 degrees Celsius. So I just boiled some water, and I only have 50 um, 50 milliliters because um, I, I read up online that match heads are composed of about 50% potassium chlorate. So we can assume that less than 17 grams of this is potassium chlorate because there's also going to be the weight of the wood from the bits and matches. So if this is 17 grams then 50 milliliters should definitely dissolve all the potassium chlorate. Um, and then we're going to carry out a recrystallization as soon as we filter off everything. So we're going to go ahead and add all of our match powder in which is a lot and I don't know if this is going to work. We may have to add more and do several recrystallizations or something, and we're just going to stir it up to try to dissolve all the potassium chlorate. So will meet you back when that's done. Okay, so I had way more water because that 50 milliliters was just absorbed by the wood and whatever else was in the match, and it didn't really work. But now we have a nice slurry here. And I've let it stand for about two minutes with constant stirring to make sure that most of everything dissolved. 
So, now we can just filter this off. Now, it's very important that we don't let this cool down or else we'll actually start precipitating out potassium chlorate, which is not what we want to do. Because we want to keep it in the solution to get rid of all the other stuff. So, I'll just take this and we'll pour it into our coffee filter here. And we're just going to let this stay here until it's all filtered off. Make sure you keep the solution warm so no potassium chlorate precipitates out. It should be well above 70 degrees Celsius this whole time. Okay, so after we filtered everything and washed it several times with hot water, you can see we're left with this dyed solution. Now, this is just the dye that was in the mattress which has come over, and this shouldn't be a problem, because we're going to do a recrystallization after. Now, this is so much water here from all the washings and whatnot, that if we were to, to, to attempt to do a recrystallization now, we get uh, maybe a little bit or, or nothing, because we have so much water that even at zero degrees Celsius, it is possible that all the potassium chlorate may still be soluble. So what we're going to have to do is boil all of this down and see how much we get. So I'll be back as soon as all this solution is boiled down. Okay, so after boiling down, we actually recovered 11 grams of potassium chlorate, which is very impure because of the dye. Now to purify it, we just need to redissolve it into solution and do a recrystallization. And 11 grams is actually a fair amount because we could assume that we have at least a couple of grams of wood that came over because we ground it up. So I'm guessing we uh, recovered about 80% of the uh, potassium chlorate here. So I just have 30 um, mils of water here and we're just going to add this in. Now this is very hot boiling water and hopefully all of this will dissolve in 30 mils of water. Um, I did research on Wikipedia and 50 um, uh, grams will dissolve in 100 mils so I added a bit of excess of water so that hopefully everything will dissolve. So just add this in. And you're going to go ahead and stir this and I'll be back when everything is dissolved. Okay, so after two or three recrystallizations, um, you should be end up with a fairly nice white potassium chlorate result. So this potassium chlorate is quite pure because it has been recrystallized a couple times and um, there's no sign of any pink left. Now, what I did to get rid of any of the leftover uh, food dye color stuff is I used acetone, which can be bought as nail polish remover. Um, and I plan on making some acetone in a future video, so you could use that also. Um, but I used acetone to wash it a couple times. Because um, this uh, potassium, chlorate, uh, potassium chlorate is insoluble in acetone. So it's excellent for cleaning it. Anyhow, so here, uh, our final yield was 8 grams, which is extremely low, and this is not worth your time to do, unless you have a bunch of leftover matches because of uh, getting red phosphorus from the matchboxes like I did or whatnot, but um, this is definitely not worth your time to do. Um, I will be showing um, how to make um, potassium chlorate a different method in a future video through the electrolysis of, um, uh, what's it called, the electrolysis of potassium chloride, and I'm going to be building a chlorate cell. Anyhow, so I hope you guys enjoyed, and um, see you in the future. Wait, bye.